Welcome back to Inside Tennessee. Had some technical difficulties, uh, so Don and Karen have left us, but uh, Chief is with us again. And, and uh, we talked about recruiting as we started, but uh, I also want to talk about body cams. That's been a different kind of contrast between what the policy is for Knoxville Police and the policy for the Sheriff's Department in Knox County. Knox County Sheriff's Department uses body cams. Knoxville police haven't. Um, would you be in favor of uh, thinking about using them? Of course, you know, and I think most officers within uh, within the Knoxville Police Department, should they come about, would not. It, it's become standard in the industry now. I mean, we're used to being on camera on the in-car video, so the body camera is just another layer. Uh, it's not really anything new. We've all heard about it. Um, if it was to come to be, that would be fine. It's it's more of an added expense at this point. And you know, you have a lot of uh, departments, especially in the West, that are actually going away from body cameras because of the expense. And the expense comes, Chief, not with the initial investment necessarily, but it's the ongoing keeping of data. That's correct. And and could that cost a department? What what are the ranges that you? Gosh, I really don't have a firm number, but you know, we we looked at it several years ago, and I think it would be in the two to two and a half million, mm -hmm. quite a bit of money. And the reason is that, is that we we run our cameras 24/7. Although in background mode for some of the time, unless we have an ongoing incident or an interaction with someone in the community, and then we keep those that data for 36 months even when we don't have anything going on. Now, of course, if it was a crime or something else going on, we keep it longer. But that just amounts to a lot of data that we have to keep stored. So um, this will be a move, not necessarily by you, but if you hear a groundswell from the community or city council, is that what I'm hearing? Sure, yeah, because the city council and, and the community ultimately would have to approve the expense. Okay. Uh, but not a, a top priority on your agenda at the moment. No, not at the moment. Now that could change tomorrow. We could have something happen. So, you know, like I said, we're, we're open to the idea. We realize it could happen. And I think every officer is, is pretty much prepared for that and would be okay with that. You spent some time testifying um, in the state legislature. I want to get to that because um, it, it's something that uh, affects a, a lot of people. Um, Explain why you were in front of the legislature and your thoughts on some of the legislation that's moving through. Well, and it had to do with our police advisory review committee, which which came about in the early 2000s, and um, it has worked so well for 20 years. In fact, we just had the 20th anniversary, um, and the issue is really over subpoena power, mm -hmm. whether the advisory review committee would have subpoena power. Ours, by ordinance, does. In 20 years, they have never used it. Um, could they at some point? Yes, they could. But to take away something that they have and that has provided some balance, I think, in the community's eyes, not necessarily in the officer's eyes, but at least in the community's eyes, that gives them a little bit of balance of, of, of power or authority, um, that's going to that's gonna harm our relationship, I think. Uh, it, it, we've worked so hard, and, and we do so well with what we have. And, you know, when I, when I spoke in front of the House, one of the things that I, I said was they were looking for best practices, and I said, look at ours. I said, it's a seven page ordinance and it's been a best practice for 20 years. Uh, of course, we've had to work at it. We've worked at our relationships with, with our park committee and you know we've had people come and go from that committee. We've had people come and go from the police department, but the relationships have remained strong because of the way it's been put in place. It was and, and for people who aren't following the issue, Chief, um, the reason that it's in front of the legislature is in part because of some controversies in Memphis where uh, I believe that, um, or Nashville, 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 excuse me, where, um, some people feel like those review committees have overstepped um, in certain cases when it comes to looking into the actions of officers. Is that fair? Yeah, I think that's fair to say. And, and I'm not exactly sure of all the nuances as of how uh, Nashville voted theirs in, but it did look a little bit detrimental to, to police. And I think that's one way the state legislature was trying to provide some balance for them. Uh, but it, it, it would be detrimental, I think, in our case. Uh, Chief, let's move to the opioid fight. It has been a big conversation in this community for quite some time now. Where does it stand in your eyes? Are we winning? I, I don't think we're winning yet. I, I, we're really trying. We're refining our efforts. Um, it, it's, it's a big marshmallow, and we've tried to come at it from several different angles. I mean, it, it, as in everything else in policing, our only resource now is not just the criminal justice system. You know, we work with the Metropolitan Drug Commission on prevention, on treatment. There's new types of treatments, medical assisted treatment that I'm still trying to learn about, wrap my head around, but it seems to be working. So we need to support those uh, ideas. We now have the Behavioral Health Urgent Care Center, what we call the BHUC, 
where on low level crimes, uh, we can take people that we think may have addiction issues to the BHUC where we, they say have a warrant on them, but if they agree to undergo the program through, and administered through Helen Ross McNabb, that warrant goes away. If they walk away from the program in those few days that they have agreed to, then the warrant comes back and we arrest them. But that way they don't have a criminal record and they receive treatment. And so if we can help somebody, we have that option. We also have a drug-related death, overdose drug-related death task force that we work on with several other entities, including the DA's office, uh, the sheriff's office, uh, the DEA, uh, Appalachian Haida, uh, the medical examiner's office, and TBI has, has, now we have a friend in TBI has sent an investigator to work with us on that as well. And that's where we look at each overdose and we try to trace it back, trace back where the drugs came from and try to prosecute that person for second degree murder. And we've been su successful in that area as well. So we're, we're trying to attack on several different fronts. Um, and, and we, I, I tried to look at the numbers but you know the medical examiner's office takes a little while to determine the exact cause of death. So I can't give you a yeah we're winning. The calls are less, but um, I, I think we're trying to get a handle on. It. I think we're we're coming out on the positive side. All right, Chief. We'll continue our conversation right after a short break here on Inside Tennessee.